Matt, what does the TUC want to see from the Labour Market Enforcement Consultation? Um, well, we're quite encouraged by the new uh, consultation document actually because it sort of proposes some real transformative measures which could uh, improve the enforcement of employment rights in the UK. Um, I think there are two key areas. So, firstly, is the proposal to um, potentially um, extend licensing into different sectors. Um, we believe that licensing is the most robust system for um, putting in place checks and standards which employ, uh, employers and labour providers must adhere to before they can operate in a sector. So the potential to sort of have some pilot activity which will extend licensing is welcome um, and one that the TUC will be lobbying for. Um, I think the second proposed area in the consultation which um, could be really good for workers in the UK um, is a new uh, enforcement system for joint, uh, model of joint and several liability which would basically mean that if you're a worker um, in a supply chain and your employer breaches your employment rights you could then take an action against the head of the supply chain or the lead contractor um, to be paid the national minimum wage for example. So it gives workers an additional uh, avenue of enforcement and it encourages suppliers at the tops of supply chain to um, monitor um, and reduce risks in their supply chain. Caroline, can you give us an idea of what Flex will be including in its submission to Sir David Metcalfe's upcoming labour market consultation? Yep. Flex will be looking at the role that licensing in new labour sectors can, provide, can play in uh, regulating and enforcing labour standards, uh, in protecting workers and in preventing exploitation. We'll also be looking at the way in which channels of communication for vulnerable workers could be brought together to provide a really strong and accessible um, means of workers reporting abuse and raising um, the alarm when there might be potential cases of exploitation. Um, we'll be looking at joint liability for abuses in supply chains and particularly um, reflecting on models that have been used in countries like Belgium for integrating labour enforcement and um, corporate accountability mechanisms. Um, and we'll also be um, putting forward a case for a really evidence-based picture of risk to be established by the director. So um, drawing on all of the available evidence um, out there and particularly looking at the um, experience reflected by workers themselves to direct the small amount of resources that we have for labour inspection enforcement uh, to the right points of the labour market and of course in relation to that we'll be calling for an increase in resources to labour inspection authorities overall. We hear a lot at the moment about, uh, about nail bars, about car washes, about elements of the, the garment industry. Is there a, a danger that, that we could see regulation springing up uh, as a knee-jerk reaction just to what happens to be hot in the media at the moment? I think with the role of the director and the um, legislation in place that means that his annual strategy will set the direction of the Labour Inspection Authorities, hopefully that, that chance will be ruled out in that we know the director is very keen to gather rigorous evidence before directing Labour Inspection resources towards a particular new sector. But there is always a risk that there is a big media splash on a particular sector and therefore the, the government feels obliged to address it but hopefully and with this with this post of the Director of Labour Market Enforcement we have there a real opportunity to gain evidence and understanding of the risks across the labour market and then to really use that evidence to focus um, on, on what we consider to be high-risk sectors.